Hi, and welcome to my Lightroom tutorial. Um, Lightroom is an Adobe Photoshop product, but the amazing thing it does, and the, the, what it does that really helps stop motion animators out, is that you can do things to one picture and apply them across the board to the entire folder full of pictures. So you end up with all your pictures looking the same. And this is this is what you need in order to do stop motion animation. Um, just to get you familiar with the layout, you've got your modules up here. And the only ones you need to mess with are library and develop. The library is where you do your importing and exporting, as you can see down here. Now, I've already imported these pictures. In fact, I already messed with them before. But I'm just going to use this for demonstration purposes. I'm going to go ahead and use this. And the reason this picture is upside down is because I shoot with my camera upside down. And I'll explain that in another tutorial. But basically, it's so I can hang my camera underneath an articulated arm and just bring it right out over the set and lower it into the set and get right down at puppet eye level. Anyway, when I get my pictures from the camera, I'll, I'll just run through this. I'll explain it because I can't show you. But I, I would normally have a folder somewhere here on the desktop with my pictures straight out of the camera in raw format file, which gives you the best uncompressed quality that you can work with in Lightroom. And you just make sure you're in library module. Pull that folder down here, and the pictures will just show up one by one across here, and it will look like this. I've got 74 pictures here. That's how many frames I shot for this scene, this shot. I was animating at 12 frames per second. So it's a little over five seconds. And, and I'm going to cut off the first few frames because the first frame here, I, I used my white balance card. In fact, I put that on the first two frames just to make sure. And I'll explain the white balance card in a second too. And then as I was animating, I started, I shot two frames. And the raindrops on the window were running too fast. I had too much water mixed into the hair gel. So I decided, no, I'm going to start over. And then I shot this dark frame as a cutoff point to show me this is where I'm starting over. And then from frame six on is where my animation is. So anyway, you're in this window. You've just imported all these pictures. You can see I've got the first one here selected. It's, it's white up here and down here, and the rest of them are gray. Now, very important. This is what makes the magic work in Lightroom. Select all your pictures. On, on a Mac, you use the Command button and the A key. Now notice the rest of them are all gray. This one's still white. The rest of them are gray, but they're all selected now. And the same is true down here, white, gray. I think on a, on a PC, it would be the Control button and the A key. I think that's the difference between PC and Mac. Is the Mac uses the Command key or the PC uses the Control key. I'm not sure, though. Don't quote me on that. Okay, now you're in the library module. You've imported your pictures, and you've got them all selected. Now what you want to do, because my pictures are upside down, and this is a step most of you won't need to do because you won't be shooting upside down unless you do the same thing I'm doing here. Here's the really neat thing about Lightroom. You can flip these pictures over. Now it happens to all of them at the same time like that because they're all selected. If, if I only have one picture selected, and I flip it, only the one picture flips. See, But as long as I hit Command A, they're all selected, I can do it either up here, I can do it on any of these. Now, double click on this one, we can see it, make sure the rest of them are still selected. And let's go into the Develop module. This is where the, the real magic happens. It's, it's really dark. Let's lighten this up just so we can see what we're doing here. Okay, this is my white balance card made by a company called YBAL. Um, it's a neutral gray card, neutral white, neutral black, which are both gray, just at the, the extreme opposite ends of the gray scale. You use this with this button right here. You just click it and you get your eyedropper. And you come in here and click on a neutral gray. And you notice it changes everything. Now you can, you can use the white or black. Or just to show you, here's what happens if you click on a color that's not neutral. You get a weird color cast. 
And sometimes your pictures come like this out of the camera if it's not properly white balanced. That's why you use a white balance card, and that way you get good white balance across the board. That looks good to me. Um, now what I'm going to do is, because I have all these selected, notice down here this button says sync. If they're, if they're not all selected, if only one picture is selected, the sync button disappears. It says previews. As long as you select all, now it turns into sync. And when you click it, you get this window. You have to have all these boxes checked. You can individually check them if you want, or you can check none or check all. When you're, when you're trying to sync up an entire folder full of pictures, you want them identical, you have to have them all checked. So, so everything that's done to one picture is going to happen to all of them. Now click synchronize, and you can see across the bottom here, Well, there's not much happening right now. Oh, because I'm not on the picture that I just adjusted. Lighten that up. Select all. Sync. Synchronize. Now you can see across here they're all lightening up. Yeah, that's more like it. <laughs> okay. Now, when it, when I turn this into a movie in a minute here I'll cut out the, these first few frames we're done with the white balance card now so I'm gonna move on over here to the frame that doesn't have it now we're in the develop module I've already done white balance usually the next thing I do is crop this is your crop window I had to create my own custom setting for a 2.39 by 1 aspect ratio because they didn't have one already selected once you get in here just the size of this window, you can grab the picture and move it around, and you can frame this exactly how you want. In fact, if you want, you could go in for really close detailing. Just look at that. But that's a little too extreme for our current needs. And what I find is that with, with the pictures I get from my camera, they are about 4,000 pixels wide, which is a little more than twice HD size. So that means I could go as small as about half. Well, that's about a quarter there. <laughs> um, I'm not sure exactly how big it would be, but what I'm doing. I guess I couldn't move it because it was right in the corner. Once it hits the edges, it stops. But, yeah, you can frame it how you want. And this is nice because you can sometimes find compositions after you've shot the picture that didn't even occur to you when you were looking through the viewfinder or looking through your computer monitor, as the case may be. I'm going to go ahead and, like, like, say, for instance, you don't like this dark door over here. Just do that, and it's gone. Now, I happen to like this little drip down here, so I framed it like this, I believe. I pushed it up like that. Okay, now when you've got it framed the way you want, click the close button, and it shows you just what you've got. That looks pretty nice. It's, it's kind of light. Now you can mess with the exposure, contrast. Highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, etc., etc. Um, I'll just give you a quick idea of what these do. Lighter, darker. Highlights can make them real bright, real dim. You can adjust whites, blacks. Anyway, you can also adjust your color down here with the saturation. Control. You can go all the way to black and white if you want. You can desaturate a little. You can oversaturate a little for a cartoonish look. Your color vibrance button does something similar to saturation. I'm not sure what the difference is, but it is somehow different. I'm going to go for a somewhat undersaturated look here for a nice 70s type of a feel. Something else I want to show you is your lens corrections box down here. 
you can distort the image, make it look like a shot with a fisheye lens, or if you did shoot it with a fisheye or the really wide lens, you can you can undistort it, or you can go the opposite way if you want. I don't know that there is any lens that does that, but you can you can pretty much do whatever you want with it. You can also play around with vertical and horizontal axis, get all kinds of crazy effects. Um, you wouldn't want to do something like that very often, maybe for a really crazy character, maybe a dream scene, maybe something at the beginning of the movie for a, you know, a weird effect or something. This is pretty close to zero here. One thing that's neat about this is you can rotate the picture. If you didn't get a frame quite the way you want, you can come in here and adjust that. That's pretty neat. Okay. Once you move your cursor out of this box, you lose the graph and you can really see what you're working with. All right. Let's assume I've got this all set up the way I want it. You're done developing. You have to sync, though. Make sure everything's selected. Your sync button comes up. Click it. Make sure these are all checked. Synchronize. Watch them all change across here. Okay. Now you go into your library module, which is where you import or export. You're going to export these. Now here you can, you can, there's all kinds of choices in here. You can pick a folder. I'm going to create a folder on the desktop. Desktop. Um, subfolder. I've never done one on a desktop before. Um, I like to go with file settings. I use TIFF because JPEG is compressed. You don't want to use compressed files. TIFF, compression, none, color space, sRGB, 16 bits. Image size, and you can resize the images if you want. I'm not going to resize right now. I'm going to leave them full size. I don't use sharpening. Don't worry about metadata. Um, you want to make sure the watermark button is not checked or you'll have a watermark in the corner of every picture and you don't want that. No post-processing. Just click export. You get that little bar which is a sort of preparation bar and then up here in the corner you got your task bar that shows the actual export in progress. Now I'm going to cut this out. I messed up and I've got these showing up directly on the desktop. I'll create a folder and I'll put them in that folder and I'll be back with you when that process is done to pick this up. Okay, now this is just about done loading up here. You'll see in a second it'll say task completed. You wait until the task bar disappears like that. And now you've got all your files, which I accidentally put on my desktop. Let me get these in a folder. You want to work with them in folders. It's much better, trust me untitled folder on the desktop. All right, now, this is where you use QuickTime 7. I had to go download QuickTime 7 specially from the Apple website because they're up to like version 10 now. And QuickTime 7 was the last one that actually had a pro version. And you need that QuickTime Pro in order to do this. Go to your file pull down menu, open image sequence. From there, go to your desktop, whatever your folder is that you just put your pictures into. Click the first one and click open. Now I'm working at 12 frames per second. You can pick whatever frame rate you worked at here, you animated at. I worked at 12 frames per second, so click 12, okay. It'll make this gigantic movie that's bigger than your monitor. Um, I like to make it half size so I can see what I'm doing here. Now at this point you can watch the movie but it's kind of jerky because it's bigger than HD size and your processor has a hard time dealing with it. So anyway, what I want to do is put that back to the beginning. I want to edit this a little bit. Take the editing marks, put this one at the end. This one, click it so it turns black like that. And use your right arrow key to advance one frame at a time till we're past that frame. And this is where my animation actually starts. Uh, 
this is dark gray area here is your selected area. This is deselected, and when I do this, the deselected area will disappear. Click on player seven, edit, trim the selection. Bam, there it is. Now we want to take this cursor and run it to the beginning, or just use this button to get it to the beginning. And now you want to export a version of this that's not going to be as big as this, but it's still going to be uncompressed. For that, you want to okay, go down, go to the file menu, export. I'll just save it as untitled right now. You'd normally make up a, a name for it. I'm going to just put it on the desktop. Um, options, settings, use your animation codec. That's the one at the top. And you can get a good uncompressed version with that. Um, you want frame rate current, keyframes all, compressor millions of colors plus, quality best. Don't even mess with, don't click any data rate restrictions or anything. Click OK. Don't use any kind of filter. Size, current, OK, OK, save. And you'll see it'll make the movie here on the desktop or wherever you told it to make it. It shouldn't take long at all since it's not really compressing it. If I had chosen some compression, then it would take a lot longer. But this way it goes pretty quick. And this is a good big file. This is the file that you'll work with in your video editing software. Okay, and here we have the finished shot. This isn't actually the one I just made. This is the one from the film. So you're getting a preview of the actual shot as it's going to look in the film, more or less. Um, here it is full screen just as a payoff to this tutorial. That's just hair gel mixed with a little water. And I just took a few seconds in between each shot so it actually ran down the window a little bit. Anyway, that's it. That's that's pretty much all I wanted to show you. Thank you for watching my tutorial.